So this section, we're going to talk about some very, very, very special right triangles. We're first going to talk about squares. I know it doesn't seem like we're talking about triangles, but check this guy out. Okay? If I tell you that ABCD is a square, then the diagonal AC is going to bisect the two angles A and C. Well, in a square, we know that all four angles were 90 degrees to begin with. So if we bisected it, we now have 45 and 45 at angle C and angle A. Okay. The other properties we know about a square is all four sides are congruent, so I can mark that as well. Well, like I said, this is a chapter about right triangles. So look at the right triangles we just created. Okay. I'll pull one of them aside. This is triangle A, D, C. We've got 45 degrees, 45 degrees. We've got the sides congruent. So this ends up being a 45, 45, 90 with right triangle. And we're going to talk about the special properties and the ratios of their side lengths for a few examples. Okay. So this is one thing that you will have to memorize. The ratio of the side lengths in a 45-45-90 triangle is leg 1, the other leg is 1, so it's 1 to 1. They're the same. And the hypotenuse is always the square root of 2 times bigger than that. So we can memorize it like this. It's 1 to 1 to the square root of 2 or leg, leg, hypotenuse, okay? Or, since we could replace those ones with something like a six, and that this ratio could help us set up a proportion using that, we can memorize it with x's. So if the leg was six, then the other leg would be six, and the hypotenuse would be six square roots of two. So that's, again, saying that x is equal to six. What I want to do is be able to draw this triangle with the 1, the 1, and the square root of 2 in the correct spot so that we can set up, just like in similar triangles, proportions to find side lengths. Okay, so I've got my triangle drawn. What I want to do in example 1 and example 2 is find the length of the hypotenuse. So take a second, draw this picture, write down your special right triangle. This is our unit triangle or I don't know, do we have a better name for that? I just call it the 45, 45, 90. Okay, so this is our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Draw the other one and let's figure out what's going on. Okay, well I know since this is my 45 degrees and this is my 90 degrees, across from that is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to label that. 45 degrees across from that would be my leg and then I have my other leg. Well, this makes sense over here. The ones are my legs and the square root of 2 is my hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and set up a proportion to solve for the hypotenuse. So this guy, I'm going to call him x. All right, so x compares to the square root of 2 in my 45, 45, 90 triangle, and that has to equal 6, my leg, compared to 1. All right, so we're going to cross multiply, and we get that 1x, or just x, is equal to 6 times the square root of 2. And that would be the answer for the length of the hypotenuse. This white is going to walk you through example B. All right, I sometimes tell you guys when the triangles are turned, why don't you draw your similar triangle to face and shape that same way? So there's our 90s, therefore we know this is our 45 and 45. So I know this side length should be the square root of 2, and that should be 1 and 1. So sometimes it helps just matching up. Now that we know that they're similar, one side is bigger and they're in proportion that I can put four square roots of two over one because this is our leg and our leg, they match up. That should equal, since we're trying to find the hypotenuse, x over the square root of two, okay? So now when we cross multiply, we get x times one, which is x, equals four square roots of two times the square root of two. And like we practice with simplifying radicals, what we can combine is the square root of 2 and the square root of 2. They are like terms. So we're going to have 4 square roots of 4, but we also know here that the square root of 4 is 2. So we're getting 4 times 2, and that simplifies to 8. So this side length of the hypotenuse is 8. So why don't you guys try this one on your own? and see if you can come up with the right answer. Again, use the strategies. Now, we're not solving for the hypotenuse anymore, but draw that 45, 45, 90 triangle. Make it face the same way this is so you can set up a proper portion. All right, so if you haven't paused, go ahead and pause and work on this, and we'll go over the answer when you get back. 
So here is my 45, 45, 90 triangle in the same way as the triangle we're looking at up here. So x is going to go with 1. So you have x goes to 1, just like um, 9 is going to go with the square root of 2. All right, so when I go ahead and cross multiply, I get x times the square root of 2, or you can write the square root of 2x is equal to 9. Well, to solve this, I'm actually going to divide by the square root of 2, which gets a little messy, but we can do this. Okay? Over here, that cancels out. We have x equals. And this, we've got to rationalize the denominator. Again, square root of 2 is an irrational number. If you were to plug it in your calculator, you get a decimal that doesn't have a pattern, doesn't repeat, goes on forever. Well, we don't want that. Okay? Mathematicians somewhere, some way, decided that wasn't cool. All right. So we're going to multiply by itself, because you just figured out in the last example, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is actually just plain old 2. So I'll get rid of the radical sign. But whatever I do to the top or the bottom of a fraction, I have to do to the top as well. So now we've got 9 square roots of 2 on the top. And on the bottom, this whole thing is just plain old 2. Look at your outside numbers, 9 and 2. If you can simplify that, go for it. If not, you're done. This is my final answer. The legs of this particular triangle are 9 square roots of 2 over 2. All right, same thing. If you want to pause and attempt it on your own, then we'll walk through it. Okay, here is our triangle 1, 1 square root of 2. So x over 1 equals 12 square roots of 2 over the square root of 2. So some of you can maybe stop and pause and kind of see this, but actually the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 will cancel out, which just leaves us with x equals 12. With an equilateral triangle, and I know it's equilateral because all three angles are the same, so it's also equiangular. All right, so what we're going to do next is draw the perpendicular bisector. So it looks like this, okay? And we talked about this with isosceles triangles. If we have a perpendicular bisector, 90 degrees here, it also bisects the, vert um, the vertex angle. So now we have another type of right triangle. If I redraw this for you, we have that 30 degrees and 60 degrees and the 90 degrees still. So we're going to call this the 30, 60, 90. But before we go on to examples, I just want to look at this a little bit further. We said that this side and this side are congruent. A, B, and B, C are congruent. And A, C is the same length as A, B, and B, C. If this is a perpendicular bisector, then that means that from here, if I call it point D, to point C is exactly half the length, okay? So this is half the length of the other two of this side, the hypotenuse. Keep that in mind when we go to actually talk about the ratios we're going to use for this. And also keep in mind your proportions that the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. So 30 degrees is always going to be my smallest angle. This will always be my shortest side. The ratio in a 30, 60, 90 just like in our 45, 45, 90, we're going to draw it out. But this time, it's 1 for the side opposite the 30 degrees, 2 for the hypotenuse. And you can always tell the hypotenuse because he's opposite good old 90 degree angle. And then the second side, the middle side, is the square root of 3. So we're going to remember it like this. Short side to middle side or long side to hypotenuse. Again, something you need to memorize and be able to draw so that you can use it with your examples. All right, so let's take a look at this first one. The same idea, the same setup. Now, if you notice from this triangle to this triangle, okay, the 30 and the 60 are located different. So I'm actually going to delete this triangle. Okay, because I want to draw it in the same manner, the same angles being in the same position. So that, that way I can match up my side lengths, because remember, across from the 30 is 1, across from the 60 is square root of 3, across from the 90 is 2. So the 30s and the 60s, you definitely have to pay attention to here. Okay, because if you don't, then you're not putting your right sides, or the right sides across from the right angles. So let's go ahead and take a look 
2 square roots of 3 should match with 1, because that's across from the 30, and that should equal x over the square root of 3. So now once we cross multiply, you get x to equal 2 square roots of 3 times the square root of 3. So we're going to go ahead and combine the terms we're allowed to, which is the square root of 3 over the, times the square root of 3, which is 9, and we've learned that that shortcut should equal 2 times 3 because you just end up with that number under the radical, and you get that side length to be 6. So this side is 6. All right, we'll do the same exact thing here. I'm going to redraw my triangle up top. I'm just making it, oops, not the 30 there. I'm not paying attention, okay? The 30 actually is at the top. The 60 is at the bottom. Here's my 90. So we have 1 square root of 3 and 2 listed. So looking at my similar triangles, the square root of 3 matches with 5, and that should equal 1 over e. When I cross multiply, I get 5 to equal e square root of 3. We're going to get e by itself, so I'm going to divide out by the square root of 3 on both sides. So those cancel out, and now we're left with e divided by the square root of 3. And like Mr. Trish said, we do not like to see square roots on the bottom. So to get rid of that square root of 3 on the bottom, we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which is really just the number 1, so we're not changing it. So you're multiplying straight across. So 5 times the square root of 3 stays at the top. You can't combine those, but remember, just like we just did, when you multiply something like that, you're just left with 3. And since I can't simplify 5 over 3, this is our final answer. So that side length is 5 square root of 3 divided by Okay, so let's do the same thing again, only this time we're going to keep our answer in simplest radical form, which actually, if you think about it, is how we've been doing all of our answers. Notice we haven't gotten a single decimal to make this happen. All right, the only difference between this one is I've got to find x and y, okay? We'll set up two different proportions to make that happen. First, let's draw our triangle so that it matches. My 30 degrees is down here, 90 degrees, 60 degrees. Across from 30, we have 1. Square root of 3 across from the 60, and 2 across from 90. All right, so I have to use this 8 in both of my proportions since that's the one and only number in the first triangle. All right, so we're going to set this up. The 8 goes with the square root of 3. And let's solve for x first. x goes with 1. Okay, so we'll go ahead and solve that, and we'll cross multiply. We get x square root of 3 equals 8. Divide by the square root of 3 which some of you might have been able to look at the original proportion here, and we're pretty much looking at the same thing. We could have just started rationalizing the denominator there, but we'll keep going with the cross multiplying. So now we've got x equals 8 over the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 3 over itself. Okay, so 8 times the square root of 3, we get 8 squared to 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. 8 and 3 doesn't simplify. This is x. All right. So maybe you pause this at this point in time and try to find y. See if you can kind of beep me. This one's actually a little bit easier. We don't have any radicals to deal with. All right. So my proportion is, again, we're going to start with 8 over square root of 3. This time I want to find y, and that compares to 2. All right. I lied. We have radicals to deal with. My bad. So we get 8 times 2, which is 16. And then we get y times the square root of 3. All right, so this time, again, we're going to divide by the square root of 3. All right, cancels out over here. We're going to have to rationalize this denominator again. So 16 square root of 3, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3. This gives me 16 square root of 3 over 3. 